Hello and welcome to episode 35 of the D Hard House podcast. My name is Alicia and I'm coming to you from West Texas, where it is going to be 100 degrees Fahrenheit today. Yeah. Um, I'm going to stay inside and knit. <laughs> Uh, you can find me in all the places, social media, I'm a Liddy Knits 2 on Ravelry, Read Knit Run on Instagram, and I have a shop on Etsy called D Hard House Creations. We also have a Ravelry group for the podcast, which is where you can find all of the show notes for the episodes with links to anything that I talk about, and uh, you can also join in knit-alongs and chatter and all that good stuff. And that Ravelry group is D Hard House Podcast. Great. <laughs> um, yeah, like I said, it's going to be very hot today outside, so why am I even drinking hot tea and have um, knitwear on, that's because I'm sitting right next to the AC vent in my craft room. This is probably the only time today that I will feel cold. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so I am wearing a shawl that I knit earlier this year called the Reina Shawl, which is a free pattern on Ravelry. Very easy to follow very simple. Um, I knit this out of Knit Picks Hawthorne yarn, uh, which is, what is that, Highland wool? Um, yeah, I like this shawl. It's very small, which is nice to have every once in a while, a small shawl, so, yep. And I'm just drinking some black tea out of my knitting mug. And we're getting some glare from my windows. But it says, just pour me, just pour my coffee, hand me my knitting, and back away. <laughs> yeah. And it looks, it looks like a post-it note taped on here, which is kind of cool. Anyway, I'm going to let that cool down a little bit. Uh, yeah, so let me just tell you guys it has been a very busy few weeks because the semester officially ended yesterday that's right we had graduation events all day yesterday which was Friday um, I went to graduation at one of our campuses in the morning and then I opted out of the numerous pinning ceremonies for our nursing and dental hygiene students um, because we had a plumber come to the house and someone had to be here uh, so I was here for that fun and then uh, yesterday evening was graduation on the campus where I work so I had to dress up in all my regalia and participate in the ceremony so which we do every year yeah, it seemed longer this year. It's like we had more graduates or something, which we did, than last year. Good things. Um, anyway, yes, I'm so happy. <laughs> I get a little, a little break before summer classes start. So, um, yeah, it's always, it's always fun to see the students with their families and congratulate them and, um, find out what, you know, they, they've chosen to do with their lives. Uh, I teach at a community college, and so those first two years of college is when you really figure out, um, or, you know, most people, <laughs> not everyone, but a lot of people figure out, you know, where they want to go next, uh, which is really nice to see, so. Yeah, so we had a plumber come by the house, and that was interesting because the line that comes to the house which brings water from the water main to the house was leaking and it's right up right up in front of the house where it connects um, so we shut the water off right there 
but it was still leaking out of that joint where the pipes meet. And um, anyway, so we called the landlord and he's tried fixing it before and I, I don't know what keeps happening. But it started doing it when it got really hot outside. So I don't know if the temperature is what caused something to just give way. Anyway, they were out there like three hours yesterday in the heat, which I felt really bad. But at the same time, I was like, yes, please, please fix this thing that's happening. <laughs> and of course, you know, at first glance, he's like, oh, it'll be really easy. And then when they get in there, they're like, oh, no, there's there's more wrong with it than we thought. Okay. Yeah, so I mostly stayed inside. I kept coming out and, like, offering them water or snacks or something. And I understand they were covered in mud, like, digging out this pipe that they had to fix. So I didn't really want snacks. <laughs> But I felt really bad. So anyway, I stayed inside with Marjorie. Marjorie is our soon-to-be two-year-old uh, lab, and she um, she will turn two in like a week. So she, I don't know why, has been very defensive lately in wanting to bark at everyone, even when. They are completely across the street. Like, they're nowhere near our house. She has to bark at them and tell them, stay away. So, since these two strangers were going to be up close to the house and, like, walking back and forth between their truck and everything, I was like, ooh, training opportunity. So, we worked on being quiet when people are walking around outside. She did pretty well. I mean... This is the only time I've done it so far, and she did pretty well, so I'm happy. And then this morning we went on a W. She's in the room. I can't say the the trigger word, you know. But uh, we went for one of those this morning, and oh my gosh, really good. We have been working very hard on not pulling on the leash, right? And this morning was just like, it was first, well, it started off really bad because there was a stray cat in the neighbor's yard and she was all like, let me play with the cat. I'm gonna pull your arm off of your body if you don't let me go over there. So we had to like divert, take a different route than usual and uh, and then there weren't any distractions after that, and it was just perfect. So, because it was so wonderful this morning, I'm sure tomorrow morning it will be just crazy bad. So, <laughs> that's how it works, right? <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so, uh, because it was, you know, the last week of classes, final exam week, get all your grades in, go to graduation. Uh, it has been very busy. So, um, yeah, I haven't done much knitting, uh, but I will show you. I, I, mean, I say I haven't done much knitting. I'm almost done with the baby blanket. So let me just show you guys. Okay, so knitting. Uh, Oh, I do have something finished. I guess I'll save that for the end. So works in progress. Um, I'm knitting a baby blanket for a coworker, and I believe she has now taken her leave, I think. Uh, so this is unfortunate. I did not finish it so I could give it to her before she took time off. but whatever. I'll give it to her when she comes back. It's not a big deal. So this is, let me just show you what I have. Whoa. Yes. I'm on the third and final color. So 
three color blanket. So the pattern is the blended brioche baby blanket and the designer's name is evading me right now, but I do have it linked on my project page on Ravelry. Uh, this is a paid for pattern. It is not free, but it was very reasonable. So it's a brioche pattern and uh, in the pattern she uses five colors and they're speckled and it's almost like a fade kind of thing. Um, I obviously did not go that route. I went with three colors and they're solid but you do one color brioche and then two color brioche to blend between the colors and then one color brioche in the new color and etc. Right? So, so I am doing the one color brioche now with the last color and then I'll finish off the border. There is a border running around the whole thing. Um, so yeah, it's, it's rather large. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but I like it. It's really fun. And uh, yeah, so if I try to show both sides at the same time, you can see the overlap maybe a little better. So yeah. Anyway, I'm having fun with it. It is super mindless and that's saying something considering the whole thing is brioche. So uh, if you're not familiar with brioche knitting, it is a reversible um, style of knitting. And maybe I'll go with two more contrasting colors to show you. But like, um, for this side, the green is dominant. And if I flip it to the other side, the blue is dominant. But you can still see the non-dominant color through the work, which is which is fun. But um, yeah, you end up knitting each row twice because you had to do it with one color and then with the other color. So it's taken longer than I thought it would and I knew that I picked a brioche pattern and I was like whatever it's what I want to knit so it'll be fine and it is I'm I'm chugging away I just do a little bit here and there and then sometimes binge watch and binge knit and then there we go because I am totally binge watching Criminal Minds which is an amazing show on Netflix and uh, yeah. So, okay. So the pattern is blended brioche baby blanket. It's linked on my project page for this project. I am using, um, oh look, I have a tag right here. <laughs> this is my tag box. Okay, this is a box from Craftsy, which I used as a lazy Kate at one point, so it has holes in it. <laughs> so, um, but I just throw all my yarn tags in here. Um, once I've either finished knitting with it or I just find yarn labels all over the house because I'm terrible and I just scoop them all up and throw them in this box. And so if I ever need to find my yarn label, I can because you can kind of remember what you were using uh, but this way I have them all in one place so <laughs> but uh, it's baby B sweet delights in three different colors one of them is infant teal um, and it's just uh, it's from Hobby Lobby it's acrylic yarn so um, they can just throw it in the wash and not worry about it being wool because it all, all it's all acrylic acrylic and polyamide it's uh is it a DK weight DK weight yarn I believe it's four ounces 377 yards 
Yeah, maybe it says on here. It doesn't say, but it's got that tiny little skein down there with a three on it. Light. Three. Light. Wow, it is really hard to hold this still on that camera. I'm so sorry. Um, but anyway, I love this yarn. I, I really do. Um, I am not a yarn snob. Look, I have three more ready for a girl baby blanket. <laughs> anyone should have a girl um, carrots oh no <laughs> oh these names are funny okay what else do we have oh baby red I don't baby red it is not red wow no it is pink it's pink it's not red um, and this one is wild strawberry It looks red on camera, but it does not look red to me. It looks like pink. This looks like bright pink, and this looks like fuchsia to me. And orange. But, I don't know. Anyway, there is another lady at work who is pregnant, and I don't... I haven't talked to her <laughs> about her pregnancy so I don't know if she's having a girl or a boy so I'm kinda hoping she has a girl cuz I already have the yarn for it <laughs> but if she's having a boy it's just an excuse to go to the yarn store so I don't care have a girl no alright um yeah so I'll show you guys I okay so, I'm a math teacher so I usually buy notebooks that are like graph paper because it's easy to take notes on. And anytime I need to sketch a picture of a graph line or a parabola or whatever I need to, it's already graph paper. Okay, so this is my knitting notebook and I use this to keep track of my patterns. So I did modify this because the pattern called for five yarns and I'm only using three and so I did my own thing. So okay this is how I've been keeping track of this pattern is I will um, so here's where I am now is I write out the numbers for you know how many rows I need to do and as I complete them I cross them off. So, like I said, I have to knit each row twice because it's brioche. So I've got nine and nine is next, right? Whatever. Um, I used to do tallies, but now I find this easier because then I don't have to remember how many am I supposed to do, right? Because when you tally, you tally as you go. But if I set this down and then come back and go, wait, was I going to do 30 or 35 or 36 repeats, right? So I have it all written down. I'm going to do 35. See? <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm just, it's not like super organized, but... And I also do crazy things like, because it's graph paper, and if you've been watching for a little bit, I've been designing some color work socks, so I will just start drawing and coloring in squares and coming up with new color work patterns or old color work patterns or whatever. Um, it just, so it works. This is not in any way organized, because as soon as I get an idea, I write it down. Like, Or I use it as scratch paper when I'm like doing math, because there's the, um, the law of cosines. <laughs> I was teaching trigonometry this semester. Actually, I teach trigonometry every semester. But yeah, for those of you who are interested. I know. You know, math is not that bad. I love you guys, but math is not that bad, okay? We all have to count in our knitting. 
but not have to use law of cosines. So, okay. Um. Yeah, I want to get more organized with this. Like, okay. I like that keeping track of my pattern is messy because I don't have to care what it looks like. It's just a matter of keeping track of rows or repeats or whatever, right? But I would like to make um, a knitting notebook that is more presentable for when I finish the pattern. More, more on the lines of like, what yarn did I use? What was my gauge? Did I like the pattern? Would I knit it again? Um, if I could change anything about the pattern, what would it be? So that in the future, when I'm looking back, right, I can be like, oh, I really did like making this baby blanket. But one thing I would change is not using solid colors. Or maybe not blocking the colors so much, maybe striping them more just throughout the blanket. Um, Things like that. So if I ever come back and want to, someone is, you know, I want to make a baby blanket for a friend in the future and I look back and go, oh, I really enjoyed knitting this. Let me do it again. Um, they don't have those notes to look at and pictures and things. And, and Ravelry is really good for that, but there's something about like tangible, holding the page, handwriting your notes. It just has a different feel to it than typing it into the notes section on Ravelry. So. Hmm. It's on my wish list. We'll see if it ever gets done. I mean, I have this whole wall to knit, so... Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I'm making progress. That is good. Uh... Ooh, yes. Dad's sweater is living in one of my bags, so I make bags and sell them on Etsy. And this is my sweater size bag in a nice Mario print. And I finished the second sleeve. Is it still connected? I never cut it. <laughs> is it really? It really is. Okay. Well, I don't have any scissors handy, so I'll do that later. But yes, it is finished with yarn on the, with yarn, with waist yarn holding the stitches. So I think I was here last time I showed this to you. So, funny story, I thought I was finished. I like got here, put all the live stitches on waist yarn, went to go cut the yarn, lined it up with this other sleeve and went, crap, it's too short. It's like an inch too short. And yeah, it's because I showed you my notebook, okay, my keeping track of things was not super clear, so I forgot I still needed to knit a little bit more. Okay, so I'll put all those stitches back on the needles. Oh yeah, no, I did cut the yarn. I did, so I had to redo so that I have an extra end to weave in now. Anyway, the sleeves are done. So what I'm going to do is finish the baby blanket and then I will cast on the body of the sweater because I just can't have too many big projects going at once because then they'll just never get done. I feel bogged down. So this pattern is, and I've shown this to you so many times now because I'm taking my sweet time making dad's sweater. This is the Ranger by Jared Blood. It is a textured cardigan. Okay. It's lots of fun. Um, I'm excited to move on past the sleeves. Okay, yep. But I have to cast on over 200 stitches. And it specifically says in here, using the long tail method. So, I am going to pull yarn from two skeins to do this long tail cast on, instead of actually guessing how long the tail needs to be. Because, oh my gosh. But yeah, I will probably do twisted German instead of long tail just because 
I'm more familiar with it, and I really like like that cast on, so that's what I'll do. But yeah, I'm knitting this out of Karen, Karen yarn, which is another acrylic. Uh, yep, bought the whole pound. <laughs> bought two pounds. Uh, the color is what? Soft gray? Soft gray mix. So it's got a little bit of a heathering look to it. Not that you can tell with my lighting and stuff. It's a really nice gray. And it will go really well with all of Dad's things. So, yes. I'm very happy. Very happy. So, what I will end up doing is knitting the body of the sweater from the bottom up, join the sleeves back on, and then knit the yoke. And then I'm assuming, I haven't read that far ahead, come back and do the button band. So, yes. Oh, and the AC just turned off. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, so I finished the second sleeve and then I used that as a palette cleanser from the baby blanket. <laughs> and now I just, I really need to finish this thing so I can give it to its recipient and then um, move back to the sweater. So that's a thing. Um, okay, so my finished object. Are you ready? is my socks. Yes, Colorwork Socks. This is design number two of this year. Uh, so, both socks are finished. Ends are woven in. Ready for some pictures so I can put that in the pattern and send it off to my test knitter. Yay! Yeah. I really like it. It's fun. So, uh, I wrote the pattern to be toe up, uh, and this time I gave it a shorter toe than usual. Um, and actually, up until now, I've only ever used one toe. Um, so I thought, you know what, let's change it up a little bit and try something different. And I actually like the fit a lot better. Yeah. So, um, anyway, uh, short row heel, shorter toe, short, 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 I guess, short socks, sort of. Some people knit their socks like all the way up the sock blocker, which is awesome, but I have athletic calves. So, I would need to do some increases on here in order for this sock to fit over my calves. And I just don't feel like doing that. So, I knit my socks shorter. Uh, and they're not, they're not like ankle socks. They come up over my ankle. They're probably like boot height. So I could wear these in my hiking boots and it would be fine. Uh, and I honestly prefer that length. That or an ankle sock. So I'm not a huge fan of super tall socks unless it's cold outside and I'm layering, which I now live in West Texas. That doesn't happen very often. So shorter socks it is. For those of you who don't know, I'm from Michigan and used to live in Montana when going to grad school. And in both of those places, there would be some days where you would have to wear layers to go to class. Yes. Okay, so they are finished. I'm very excited to get them test knit and then get the pattern up. So yes, I have cast on the next pair, but I'm going to keep them as a surprise until I finish the first sock. I think when I finish the first sock, then I will draft up the pattern to send out to test knitters instead of waiting till I finish both. Um... But with both socks, I was trying to iron out some kinks, and I really needed to knit it twice to get everything figured out. But I think I should be good now. Yep. So, 
I knit these out of Premier Yarns, which is... I bet there's a tag in here. Oh my gosh, I'm so lazy. Um, I know there's one somewhere in here. Nope, that's not it. Ah, there's one. I was just about to give up. Okay, so Premier Yarns, Serenity Sock. I got this at a very good price on Black Friday. Yes. So this is 25%. Oh, here we go. 50% superwash merino wool, 25% rayon, and 25% nylon. So it's like half wool, half man made stuff. So very soft it's very easy to work with um, I like the colors I think they work really well together so yeah I'm happy but um, really any fingering weight yarn would be fine as long as you're comfortable with that composition being a sock so that's just really the only thing Yep, I'm really happy these are finished. Um, I'm really excited to wear them. Uh, Michael and I are planning some camping trips this summer, so and that's when my hand knit socks usually get worn the most because we like to go camping in colder places <laughs> that sometimes still have snow. <laughs> yeah, so that is that um on sort of a separate note i've been doing some spinning and i have it on the floor here so i got a turkish spindle at dfw fiber fest and when i wasn't knitting on the baby blanket i was spinning and i did quite a bit of spinning for me who's pretty new to spinning uh, and I went ahead and watched a bunch of YouTube videos about Turkish spindles and some of that was about how to wind your yarn onto your spindle and what do they call this a god's eye or something anyway oh yeah I had fun with that <laughs> so um, yeah so I'm just spinning up some merino uh, merino wool and it's just a natural gray excuse me I'm keeping this in a basket and I just said the whole thing in here um, oh and then toss it out the other side uh, but yeah I've been before it got crazy hot outside which hello when did summer get here like what on earth uh, when it was not 70 degrees already when waking up. Like, this morning it was already 70 degrees outside when we got up. It was 75 when I took um, you-know-who with four feet for a you-know-what. Uh, yeah, it was 75. And it was morning still. So, um, <laughs> when it was like in the 50s and 60s in the morning, I would sit outside with Marjorie and she'd be running around the backyard doing what dogs do and I would be spinning and it was lovely just enjoying my coffee and I can hear the birds chirping and waking up and all the neighborhood dogs coming outside <laughs> but it was still really relaxing and really nice but with it being so hot outside and sweating while spinning is not really the best thing but um but yeah so I am if you've noticed I don't know if you can tell um on the spindle is plied yarn right and you can see my single my singles here so I am Navajo plying or chain plying as I go and this was a technique taught by Jerry Brock at 
DFW Fiberfest. And this is one of her spindles, Jerry Brock spindle. And I love it. I love the method. I love that when I take this ball of yarn off the spindle, it is already plied and ready to be used. So, yeah. Uh, the only thing I'm wondering now is at what point do I take this yarn off here and, and start anew? You know, like how much how much weight are you willing to add to your spindle before you decide it's too heavy and you can't make the same thickness of yarn anymore, you know, because it's too heavy. I don't know. I'm, I'm playing around with that. If you have any tips, I would love to hear about it, but yeah. I'm having fun and that's all that matters and I don't know what I'm gonna make out of this yarn. Definitely not socks. There's no nylon in here. It's just merino. Maybe like, ooh, maybe in a, uh, it is not a scarf and it is not a cowl. What is this? Shawl. Jeez, it's called a shawl. Maybe in a shawl. Anyway. I'm having fun with it and I love it. Um, yeah. So you can see I haven't done much. It has been busy at work. So I'm going to take this weekend to relax, do more knitting, maybe some sewing because I haven't done that in a while. I have no bags to show you. Um, <laughs> terrible. So, yeah, I'm going to do that. And then, while I do get, like, time off before summer starts, I do have to prep for my summer class, like, get all my online platforms ready to go with new due dates on homework and all that stuff. So, it's not like I'm completely off from work. I mean, I could be, and I could just put all of that off and procrastinate until the very last minute and then be a ball of stress, or I could do a little bit each day. <laughs> so I'm not a ball of stress. All right, so that concludes the knitting portion of this podcast, um, and really the podcast, I mean... I've been trying really hard with my fitness and working out and stuff. Um, I'm just taking it one day at a time because it's really all you can do. And as much as I like to see, okay, I like to see progress. And with knitting, it's, I mean, you just watch your projects grow until they're finished. And the, the progress is right there in front of you. But when you're trying to like lose weight and get in shape, you have all these ups and downs depending on like everything else that's going on in your life. And even if you do everything right, sometimes you still don't lose weight or show progress in the way you want to see progress. So I'm trying not to like, I'm a numbers person. I teach math. So tracking progress using numbers is something I do and to tell myself ignore the numbers just focus on how you feel because I feel amazing I feel so much better now that I've started like being serious about working out I feel like I have more energy I can get through a longer day and not need a nap or 16 cups of coffee. Um, not that I've ever drank 16 cups of coffee in a day, but I felt like I needed 16 cups of coffee. Uh, so, yeah, I just need to focus on, on those things that when we go on our backpacking trip, I'm going to be able to do it and not just feel tired the whole time. And that's what I want. That's what I want to be able to do is when we go on our vacations, our camping trips, that we're not having to like 
stop and take a break every 20 minutes from setting up the tent or whatever. And uh, that's just what sitting around has done to me. So anyway, yeah. Thanks for sticking around. <laughs> I am now in like talk about random things mode. So I'm going to call it a day. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around. Be sure to hit subscribe on your way out. And uh, if you at any point would like to be a test knitter for Colorwork Socks, okay, I have a thread in the Ravelry group, the D Hard House podcast Ravelry group. Uh, I think it's called Test Knitters or Test Knitting, something along those lines. Um, and just throw a, a comment in there saying you, you're interested in test knitting. Uh, this is currently the pair that is up for test knitting, okay, and I do have a picture in the thread that says currently up for test knitting and picture of, of said socks. So, um, yeah, I'm happy to have more test knitters than just one if you're interested and you get the pattern for free by doing that, okay? Uh, I really appreciate it. It's awesome. So, yeah. If you're interested in that, please let me know. I, I would really, really like that. And if that is not your cup of tea, that's cool too. <laughs> so, um, I will see you guys next time. I will try to get an episode up sooner rather than later. Now that finals are over. So, <laughs> But I can't make any promises. What if our power goes out again? Which totally happened. I won't start a whole new story. So I'll just tell you real fast. There was a fire in town, like a grass fire, and we lost our power. Uh, I guess what happened, I heard through the grapevine that a power line fell, it was a really windy day, a power line fell, gave off a spark, it's also really dry, we had a warning saying, you know, don't burn anything, and yeah, it started a grass fire which burned down some homes and anyway I was gonna record a podcast and we lost our power so it wasn't gonna happen so hopefully that doesn't happen again <laughs> so I'll see you guys next time happy knitting happy reading happy running happy whatever it is you do for fun and I'll see you next time bye